Excellent. Okay, so I am uh, Natalie Lorente. I'm with Operation Hope. Uh, I'm one of the youth program managers out of the city of Chicago. And we develop quite a bit of programming to educate our young people. Uh, a little bit about Operation Hope. So we have an excellent award-winning program that deals with financial literacy curriculum that was developed by, by Operation Hope for grades four through 12. It's called Banking on Our Future. And this program is led entirely by uh, volunteers, much like yourself or people throughout the community. And it's, at, it's delivered at no cost to students or schools. Nationally, since we've begun the program, over 1 million youth have been taught financial literacy. There are cur currently over 4,000 schools and community partners uh, with us, as well as 26,045 26, volunteers that have been trained to deliver the program. One really fun fact for you Chicagoans is that in and around Chicago, the program was seed funded by Oprah Winfrey actually back in 2002. And since then, we can proudly say that over 100,000 youth in the city of Chicago have completed this financial literacy program. Um, why does that create impact? Because on average, students' gains or what they learn from the point that they started until they finish the program is about 24%. So we do take assessments to kind of see, gauge um, kids learning and to see what, what you know, basic knowledge have they gotten. So what, what is this program? Let, let's talk a little bit more about it. Banking on our future in the COVID world has been transitioned to a virtual curriculum. We now offer uh, a digital edition, both for kids starting at, you know, elementary school from grades four all the way to say grade eight. Uh, we have the two programs divided into elementary school and middle and high schoolers geared more towards young adults. And it's, it's really cool because the curriculum is un interactive. Students can actually check off their answers. They can even make budget choices. Um, it especially hits home. I had a class of high school students over the summer when we were testing out the programming. And um, it especially hits home for, for high schoolers that are thinking about being independent or wanting to get their first place or their first car. Uh, they fill out their own savings goals online and they can even utilize a spending tracker to kind of learn about saving and budgeting all together. Okay, so the five components of this teaching curriculum, um, if you're interested in volunteering with, on behalf of Operation Hope or just you know being a part of the community and teaching kids, it has five components. So it's essentially a five week program with these uh, pieces of curriculum. So a course in dignity, that teaches you about making sound financial um, choices. It also has our basics of budgeting. So we teach kids, all right, so I need to set this aside for this purpose. And you know, I think if you were a part of any of the sessions earlier today, it's creating those buckets or those jars, even as uh, ourselves as adults, uh, putting things into perspective, especially where the way our money is coming in and the way our money is going out. Another part to that is getting smart about banking. Uh, it's the 101 of banking, understanding uh, the different types of accounts and how to make deposits and how to keep a ledger. Uh, those are some of the basics that all uh, young adults need to know, uh, as well as the fundamentals of credit. Like, how do you get your first credit card? Like, um, is it the same as a debit card, the way that it's utilized? And then finally, we have a brief intro introduction for our students to saving and investing. And that's a real eye opener to see like, just how, if you were part of the last session, how Miles was talking about how he got his start, um, giving the kids exposure to this type of basic knowledge really sets the tone for their financial futures. Uh, so again, if anyone would like to participate or be a part of um, hosting one of the teaching sessions, um, we'll talk more about that at the at the towards the end. So the virtual curriculum is delivered in two forms. Right now during COVID, it's either via Google Classroom or Zoom. Google Classroom is really nice because it has incre increased engagement and in interactive activities for the kids. This is just a snapshot of what it might look like, um, how the courses are divided up by topic and how you have like different games and trackers and things that the kids can access. Uh, 
if in the event the school didn't have access to a Google Classroom, we would then allow for like a PowerPoint presentation with our vir virtual packet via, via Zoom. And we can always um, talk about that if you have more questions offline. Okay, so if you are interested in supporting our youth, uh, you can become a Hope Corps volunteer. You can sign up for any of the opportunities nationwide, actually, since we're in a virtual platform. Uh, all you have to do is to go to this uh, website and fill out your profile and sign the volunteer uh, code of conduct and policy form. And then there is uh, the formality of a background check that you will receive within 48 hours from Sterling if you decide to do so. So I uh, strongly encourage you to uh, to volunteer today or, or try for your first opportunity. You never know what you can do until you try to impact our youth. All right, so teaching kids um, how to save for the future. Here are some of the things that I wanted to show you. Let's see, here are some of the basic tips for parents. Okay, step number one, set examples, right? Kids don't model what, what you tell them, they model what your example, the things that you do. So more often than not, they're gonna watch what you do and not what you say. Um, one of my family members is, is a super duper uh, couponier. She, she gets stuff for free. She has everything stockpiled from toilet paper to um, laundry detergent. So you can in incorporate this with your children by clipping coupons and searching for lowest prices at stores. Uh, it all comes down to developing healthy money habits together with them. Next, um, you can discuss the positive aspects of saving. Um, Explain how it might not be fun or easy to do it first, but start by showing the concept of how you can grow your money when you have something already saved. How it, show, that, show them the accumulation. Uh, another step to consider is helping them create a small budgeting system when they receive money. Uh, there's, there's the jars, the, the jar system, or also the envelope budgeting plan, where they set aside um, money for a different purpose. You can start, we like rules of three around here. So you can start with three different envelopes and split the money by its purpose. Okay, a few more tips to close up and then we'll have uh, Caleb speak next. Here we go. So allow your children to make mistakes along the way. Spending all their birthday money at once can prove to be a valuable lesson because then there's nothing else to fall back on. Uh, we always learn from our mistakes, right? Talk to them about uh, the advertisements that are created to target children. When, when shopping, you can, you can show them like, okay, here's the difference between um, the brand main Oreos and the price versus like the knockoff brand, which might be a dollar or so less. Have them become more critical thinking and evaluate pricing and the world around them, which is always important. All right, so investing in your child's future, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Caleb, just a second. Mm. Okay, so Caleb Frankel, he's the founder of Early Bird, uh, co-founder, excuse me, and the C COO of Early Bird. Early Bird is a financial technology and gifting platform that empowers parents, family, and friends to collectively invest in the financial future of a child. Relevant to, to today's session, Early Bird's mission is to enrich our next generation with financial freedom. Caleb is a 10-year vet in the SaaS and technology space right here in Chicagoland. Prior to his latest endeavor, Caleb spent the last seven years in the HR tech and recruiting space at Yellow. Today, he is ex excited to share his new startup, Early Bird, and demo their app, which is launching in the App Store next week. Caleb, without further ado, I will pass it over to you. Thank you, Natalie. Um, Stop sharing. Yeah, and I think I need someone. Oh, there we go. Uh, we're all set. How's everyone doing? Thanks for uh, joining that incred this incredible session. Uh, so excited to be talking about empowering our youth and the different tools and ways in which we all as a community can, can really be involved. Um, Natalie, thank you for that introduction. I don't think I could have said it better myself. Um, so we'll focus uh, most of my time on Early Bird itself. Um, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the origin story, how uh, my co-founder and I, Jordan Wexler, uh, came up with the idea. Uh, it's always fun to hear sort of co-founders uh, and, and where the ideas come from. 
where the inspiration, where their mission lies, uh, their values, um, and then actually see the product at, at the end of the uh, call today. Um, so early bird at a high level is simplifying investing uh, for parents and elevating gifting to enable a brighter financial future for the next generation. Um, so this all started uh, actually when my co-founder Jordan reached out to me, we both had become uh, godparents uh, and uncles uh, to newborns about a year and a half ago. Um, we were head over heels excited about these new children in our lives. Um, as successful business people, uh, we had capital and experience and privilege uh, and we wanted to share, you know, that capital, that privilege, and that those experiences, uh, and pass that down uh, to those kids um, that are not that now were coming in our lives. Um, so as we, you know, went went out, we went to stores, we shopped online, we looked at all the different material goods, the clothes that we could buy, um, the, the the plastic toys that were out there, Target aisles filled with them, hundreds of dollars of toys, um, and we actually, you know, bought a lot of that stuff. And the experience uh, was um, really empty, right? Uh, it felt very transactional. There, there really felt, it really felt like there needed to be a better way to gift meaningfully uh, to the kids in our lives. Um, both Jordan and I had been tracking the, what, what is called the robo advising space. So I don't know how, how many of you are familiar with apps out there like uh, Stash or Acorns or Robinhood. I'm sure you've read about them. Um, their massive valuations and growth and, and their uh, mission to democratize investing for sort of the next generation, that being millennials. Um, but none of these apps or companies were focused on uh, truly next generational wealth um, and building that uh, as early as possible. And none of them were focused on the gifting economy um, and really disrupting and transforming uh, that experience in that space of uh, empowering a child's community, family, friends, grandparents, godparents, uh, those that invest emotionally and financially in them uh, and want to see uh, their biggest dreams come true. Um, none of them were tapping into the opportunity to have healthy conversations and truly invest in the, in the kids that we love. Um, so we saw an incredible opportunity sort of at that intersection to create uh, what is today Early Bird. Um, talking really about the, the core and the crux of the problem that, that you know, and, and some of the, the higher level elements that we are, are trying to tackle. First and foremost, there is no simple way to gift a financial investment to the children we love. Uh, so we attempted this, Jordan actually set up a Robin Hood account for his niece who's two years old and was gonna put away $500 and call it the Jordo Fun Fund. Um, and it was a totally broken experience. He was the only one that contri could contribute. It was his account. He was setting up a custodial investment account or what's called an UGMA or Uniform Gift for Minors Act, Act uh, to start investing in uh, his niece, but then his brother and sister couldn't access it or invest in it. His parents couldn't invest in it. Totally broken process. So we knew we had to create something. Um, so what we have today is uh, sort of the ability for um, givers, and those would be, again, Jordan and myself, uh, you all have, I'm sure, nieces, nephews, grandchildren, godchildren, um, can download Early Bird. Uh, you'd simply connect your contacts, set up, set up an account, connect your contacts, select the parent you'd like to gift to uh, from that contact list, uh, type in the name of the child, enter the dollar amount, you'd see the compound interest. And then one of the most important elements, and I think differentiators of this experience, when we talk about transformation of uh, gifting and, and moving from transactional to, to a transformational experience, um, we really had to bring emotion and uh, sort of passing on of uh, our relationships and the community's relationships with money uh, down to that next generation. So we tied a video memory to every financial gift. Um, so uh, you record a short memory, um, you connect your bank account. So we integrate with a tool called Plaid, uh, which is what a lot of these fintechs, financial technology and robo advisors use. Uh, and then additionally, transaction by definition very much feels like a one-time event, right? I, I, I give a gift and I forgot about it and I'm on to my next gift or onto my next thing in my life. Uh, truly investing in someone is about the long haul and being and remaining connected. And so the other aspect that differenti differentiates Early Bird is being able to track and 
uh, stay connected with the investments, those kids in your life over time. So not just investing in them on their birthday one time or for Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, or Chinese New Year, but for any occasion, when they lose their first tooth, when um, uh, someone hits a home run, when they get an A on a test and uh, creating rewards for milestones over the course of the child's life, starting at the earliest possible age. Um, on the parent side, there's an incredible opportunity to educate and create financial literacy uh, and empower the parent with a super powerful tool, uh, which simplicity is key in that, um, in exposing them to the stock market and investing. Um, so we chose a, like I said, a custodial investment account or an UGMA account as our vehicle. There's truly two primary vehicles that are used today. Uh, when parents start to invest in their children, there's a 529 college savings plan, which is typically used or always used for uh, accredited educational expenses and institutions. Uh, it is limited to that. Uh, it is There is uh, some tax benefits associated with a 529 plan. Um, but what we really wanted to empower is financial freedom and opening the conversation for parent and child or community and child to talk about goals and aspirations. College might not be for everyone. College might look very differently in 18 years. Uh, and so let's have a conversation. Let's have conversations with our kids about what they dream of. Is it starting their own business? Is it traveling the world? Is it buying a home? Is it buying their first car? Um, Long-term gratification versus short-term gratification and the importance uh, of how money and funds grow over time to achieve those goals. Um, so we've very much simplified the process for parents uh, when they first have a child or when they're at a very early age to set up this custodial investment account they, within minutes, answer a couple investor profile questions. We recommend um, uh, one of five uh, investment portfolios ranging from conservative to aggressive, depending on their answers to that original uh, investor profile questionnaire. Um, and then uh, they can select one of those five if they don't like our recommendation. And then we also have this opportunity for uh, parents to customize um, their portfolio and add what we call value-based uh, investments. So each of those portfolios are made up of ETFs, uh, exchange trade funds, um, and all BlackRock iShare ETFs. And uh, so the parent can learn about these uh, portfolios, the ETFs themselves, what, what is comprised in them. And then on top of that can even customize up to 5% of their portfolio uh, to the values that they believe in. So things like women who lead or driving diversity or water for everyone, which are essentially uh, renamed versions of the ETFs that are publicly out there on uh, any of the markets that you see today. Uh, and then on the parent side, they can amplify this concept of investing in their own child and create an opportunity and say, you know, what? I, we don't need any more stuff. We don't need the plastic toys. We don't need any more um, clothes at this point that they're going to outgrow. Um, I re what, what we really want to prioritize is uh, connection and the opportunity to pass on uh, financial literacy. And so that really leads me to the three pillars of early bird, uh, financial literacy, financial empowerment, and financial freedom. Uh, financial literacy is really tied to both the content that we create with both through ourselves organically, as well as with our partners. But most importantly, that literacy and the uh, conversations that are had uh, in those video memories that are passed down. So think about the lessons learned from grandma and grandpa or from aunt and uncle or from cousins who over the years have invested uh, in this child um, that really serve as a time capsule uh, that the child can watch and understand what went into the funds that they now have to either apply to college or uh, buy their first home or whatever those goals that they uh, initially set. The next, and I think this is really important, and Natalie, Natalie touched on this, is financial empowerment. It's one thing to have the knowledge. It's, it's the other to actually have the capital to apply that knowledge. Um, so I have an example here uh, that we'll go into, but even with $25 a month or $7 a week investing into a child's financial future, there's the opportunity for empowerment, right? They're, knowing that a child, the child knowing that they have capital to work with truly creates financial freedom for themselves. Uh, so at the age of 18 or 21, depending on the state that they open the account, uh, that account becomes theirs and they can truly uh, start to, to either continue to invest in, in the, uh, that can be, become their dedicated brokerage account or they can use those funds for uh, one of the goals that um, they had talked about and set forth. Uh, so this is just a quick example, uh, obviously um, totally theoretical, um, but with $25 a month in parent contributions, uh, maybe 
a couple hundred uh, gifts sent, uh, a total of $900 saved over the course of a year, over 18 years, or I guess in this case, 16 years, Isadora, which is actually Izzy, the, the inspiration for Early Bird, would have close to $30,000 by the time she's 18. Um, and, and again, this is a somewhat, I'd say, aggressive and very dedicated account, but you can see the opportunity, whether we're talking about $5,000, $10,000, or $30,000, uh, the opportunity to truly create inspiration and, and a, a great financial foundation for these child, uh, children uh, and the next generation um, that precedes us. Um, I don't think I'll touch on uh, sort of behind the screens necessarily. I guess the quick hits here are we are, uh, Early Bird is a registered investment advisor with the SEC. Uh, we're an RIA. Uh, as I mentioned, we use a uniform gift for minors. Uh, accounts uh, or custodial accounts, portfolios are made up of BlackRock ETF portfolios. Uh, we have great security, uh, we're best in the business uh, and surrounded by incredible uh, both uh, VCs, uh, venture capital firms, um, and investors and advisors who've helped guide us here. We announced uh, two weeks ago, actually, our most recent funding, all Chicago, mostly Chicago-based um, venture capital funds for uh, our seed round investment. Um, and then great integration partners who uh, work with the biggest fin uh, financial technology providers uh, in the space. Uh, so without uh, further ado, I'm going to present on my share screen. Doesn't look like I can share my phone on this Zoom, which is unfortunate. So yes. I, I will actually share sort of a conceptual video uh, and Pardon me. Um, so one of the launch videos that uh, we'll be announcing, and I think you can see the emotion connected to this and this concept of community um, right here uh, in this short sort of promotional video that, that we'll be pushing out as part of our launch next week. Buddy. Hi, Tex. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Nisho. This is Daddy. And Mommy. It's your dad. Obviously the greatest dad in the world. It is November 9th, 2020. And it's been a weird year. Starting today, we've decided to give you a little bit of money each month. It's your first investment account where we can start investing in your future. Maybe you're going to travel the world and you need money for a big trip. It might be school. It might be starting a business. What better time than now to talk about the future? Money takes time. Taking money takes time. The earlier you can start, the more discipline you have. I love you. You're a sweet potato. I hope that I'm going to be there as a sounding board. I love you. We love you, baby. I love you. This will be pretty wild to see this in 20 years or whenever you watch it. Welcome to Early Bird, the first gifting platform that empowers family and friends to collectively invest in the kids you love. It's time to build the nest. So I hope everybody could hear that. Um, was everybody able to hear that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, so I think if I'm not able to demo, unfortunately, I can definitely field any questions that have popped up uh, that I have not read yet. Um, but it doesn't look like I'm able to share my phone screen in order to, yeah, in order to uh, present uh, the actual app itself. But it will be available next week, so everybody doesn't need to demo. You can download uh, the app. Um, I can't disclose necessarily the exact date, but next week. Uh, we will be live in the App Store and ready for parents and family and friends just in time for the holidays to start gifting to the next generation. Uh, Caleb, I think they were, uh, they had asked earlier in the chat, how do they, what does the icon look like or what does the, the app look like in order to download it in iOS or Android? It's currently available. Uh, so out of the gate, we're going live with just iOS. So not available in Android yet. Uh, awesome. That is something that's coming in the next few months. Uh, if you type in and search in the App Store, not today because it's not live yet, uh, but next week, um, I would say latter half of the week, 
uh, if you type in early bird, it's called gift invest grow. Uh, so early bird gift and guest best grow. But if you just typed in early bird invest, uh, it would pop up. It is uh, purely an app today. So this is sort of very early stage startup. Uh, we're focusing on iOS uh, first, and then we will be moving to Android. Uh, we really want to create an optimal and transformative experience around video and gifting. Uh, and we get that best experience when it's done on mobile. Um, and sort of the seamless nature of that, but we'll definitely, and there's, there's been a lot of interest in, in adding this to Android, obviously, and then uh, on web as well. Excellent, thanks for sharing with us. Um, we're open for uh, questions. We have about uh, 10, 15 minutes left for anyone that wants to pose any kind of questions. So don't be shy. <laughs> So yes, um, you just used the terms, oh, I, I guess, OES and not on the Android. Like, what does that mean exactly? So we will be available on Apple's um, App Store Oh. Uh, at first. Android uh, is something that's coming soon. So we had to build sort of, we have to build two different versions in order to get the app onto uh, Android as, uh, as well. And then it would be available in the Google Play Store. Okay. Android is going to be a few months later. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. No problem. Anyone else with questions? Do adults have access to the accounts prior to the child turning 18? Yeah, so we are. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, it's purely we're purely marketing towards uh, adult. So this is not an investing platform for kids. Um, uh, I think there's a lot of, if you look at the fintech space, there's a lot of what I would call uh, predatory apps that are teaching a lot of spending habits and not a lot of savings, which is exactly what Natalie was talking about, sort of the balance uh, and the importance of teaching balance and, and habits. Uh, so right now we are targeting and, and for parents only um, and that they can show their child on their, or, or parents or um, uh, adult givers that are giving a gift to a child, but there's no interface yet for a child. Uh, that is something we would like to add that's sort of a view only access to 13 to 18 year olds to start to give them their own experience in the literacy directly through the app as well. Is there a limitations that are able to be placed on utilizing funds beyond let's say age 18? So that's rather gonna, than feeling yeah. like they've got no windfall you know, you have access to $5,000 at age X or whatever the case may be. That is a great suggestion. And, and a lot of parents have uh, hinted and suggested at something like that. Uh, I think that is definitely something that we could add uh, and, and, and be part of, I think, right, that lesson of uh, getting access to some of the funds, funds spending some of it, you know, you know you're, you're investing to achieve goals. So uh, working through a, a plan uh, and the app supporting uh, the release of funds over different periods of time or different milestones over the child's life or adult life. And then, uh, Caleb, we had some questions in the chat. So is there currently a website for Early Bird that they there can is. access? Okay. There's, there is a website to uh, sign up for early access. Um, so if you do, if you're eager to check us out, uh, if you go to get early bird, dot io, so that's G-E-T, and I'll actually just type it in here uh to everyone you can sign up for early access um so just copy and paste that uh url uh you can sign up for early access you'll get an email with the link uh, again that link will take you to um sort of a private beta or closed what we call a closed beta of the app uh, which is available in test flight not the app store it's an apple approved beta testing platform uh, and that will give you sort of early access to start your account. Um, you'll still need to re-download uh, next week when the app comes live, uh, but you can check us out, learn more at getearlybird.io. And then a uh, following question was, uh, say for example, they don't have the application, they have an Android at the current moment. Is there another way to make a deposit or to put money into the program at via the time, website or something? At this time, there's not. The only way to um, 
uh, invest and or gift is through iOS. However, uh, one of the use cases we've seen a lot of parents early on do is if they received a check or a Venmo or um, cash even, uh, instead of just depositing it, depositing it into their own bank account, they do that, but they also then invest the same amount of funds uh, to their connected bank account if they do have uh, a Apple um, uh, phone or iOS phone. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So say if someone we know has an Apple phone, um, and we don't like can we get so once it's on android can we get them to transfer it over to us once it is on android absolutely you'll be able to log in from your phone uh to the same account on your android phone when it's, once it is available on android and also even though this is um for us parents to be trying to set something up for our kids if we want to just um, be able to build um, an account for this for just even ourselves is that what that's also for too or we would have to go to one of the other investment type apps yeah great great question um, today it's uh, the we are specifically opening up custodial accounts they're re you're required to have both a custodian and a minor and the minor needs to be under 18 uh, sorry yeah, under 18. Um, and uh, so we would not be able to support uh, an adult setting up an investment account for themselves. Um, however, you could use another uh, app or, um, uh, or another uh, brokerage to uh, do so. Okay, thank you. I think that's the end of uh, the questions that we have for today, unless anyone else wants to add. Hi, I have a question. Do you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, so you did say that you're working on um, the Android version. Is that something that you would like to do or is it in the works now? Uh, it's in the works now. Okay. All righty. Thank you. Yep. Any final questions? And then for those of you that are that might be interested in leading one of the financial literacy classes or joining the, the virtual um, volunteer corps, I can post the link in the chat in case you are interested because we're always looking for quality volunteers. <laughs> So it's been a great pleasure to have all of you together with us today and to learn about Early Bird. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your day and for being a part of uh, the sessions. I think we'll give thank you your few minutes. Thank you, Natalie, <laughs> and thank you, Caleb. We will Thanks, be everyone. in five minutes uh, hosting the closing session with Chicago City Treasurer Melissa Conyers Irvin. We've covered a lot of ground today. For those of you who have not seen me yet, I've been our Host for the day, uh, Jason Schraub with Operation Hope. We've had sessions on credit and money management, on home ownership, on small business. We had a keynote speaker session with John Hope Bryant. We had our, a uh, session on investing in the stock market. And now, of course, on resources for youth. So please feel free to stick on for a couple more minutes uh, to chat questions for, for Natalie or for Caleb. But again, at, at 325, coming up in four minutes, we will have a quick closing session with Chicago City Treasurer Melissa Conyers-Irvin. I urge you to join. <laughs>